Hey guys, this is Ryan J. Owens, owner at Elite Volley, um, podcaster sometimes whenever I can get around to it at Beyond Athletic, so check that out. Today we're going to talk about mental performance and why that is so key with Alexia Heist, uh, who founded Heist Academy, and I just noticed what she was doing, um, and I thought like, wow, uh, this is somebody I've got to pay attention to. And I've got to do something with once I started paying attention to her. So, do um, you want to share anything about your experiences with mental performance, ups and downs, or whatever? Feel free. All good. Um, I'm guessing it'll be about a 15, 20 minute chat around there. I think there was one question in there, and we'll hit that up. Um, but really, we just want to get to know each other and also bring up this topic because, as I see all the time, uh, Alexia, I hear you, by the way, it's still, yeah, hi. Try, try, it's still trying to join. So you got to wait till the double screen pops up, but okay. yeah, um, let's see, it should be all right, but there we go. I see you. So other people Perfect. should see you. Hi. Hello. So, uh, how this will work is like, just for anybody who's watching while we're talking, if you have any comments or questions or whatever, at the bottom, there's like this little question mark thingy. If you click on it, then you can, you can start to make, uh, questions or whatever. So you can also comment whenever you want things like that. But Alexia, why don't you just, um, introduce yourself and tell everybody about what you do and why you do it. Yeah, first of all, thank you so much, Ryan, for having me. I'm really excited about this. We've been planning it for a couple of months now, so it kind of feels surreal actually seeing you and knocking this out. Um, but yeah, my name is Alexia Heist, uh, originally from West Texas and came to TCU and at TCU played indoor volleyball, beach volleyball and golf. And, you know, from a young age, just really valued the mental side of sports and grew up um in a family where my mom was really big on school and taught us a lot of discipline in that aspect. And on the flip side, dad, you know, one in three boys got three girls and from a young age, just really, you know, pushed sports on us and we loved it. And, and I started playing competitive golf at six and um, competitive volleyball at nine. And so from a really young age was taught just the importance of your mind and how your thoughts impact your actions and how you can, you can really control a lot of what's going on. If you can learn how to control your breath and, you know, I'm super thankful that my parents were able to instill that from an early age. But after college, I coached club volleyball and noticed that not all athletes get that opportunity from their parents to, to help them from a young age. And they don't really learn the power of their breath and the power of visualizing a shot um, in any sport, right? And anything that you do, if you can visualize it, it'll be a little bit easier to accomplish. And so I'm, I'm super grateful for that. And Coach Club Volleyball implemented a lot of what we did at TCU at the collegiate level um, with 11-year-olds, and they loved it. You know, at the beginning, they were a little mm -hmm. hesitant about closing their eyes and visualizing. But at the end of the season, you know, we ended up fourth in the region out of over 50 teams. We started the season 25th, and, you know, by the end of it, they were asking to visualize more. They were asking to do it themselves. You know, they could lead themselves through an entire meditation at 11 years old. And, you know, parents were saying that they saw – a lot of you know differences at home. They were able to listen a little bit more. They were able to focus better. And from that year, I just started realizing, you know what? There's not enough emphasis on the mental aspect of sport performance. And that's really at any level, right? It can be at 11 or it can be at 25. And I always say totally. a physical workout will benefit everybody. A mental workout will also benefit everybody. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter what sport you play. Or even if you play a sport. If you can learn how to control your mind and if you can learn how to control your responses, your outcomes will be in your favor. Yeah. I think it's uh, just to kind of extend on what you're saying before we go in any further. It's, it's interesting when you say, you know, you can control your mind um, and that the mind controls the body. I feel like it's almost like this unsaid thing, right? Tell me if you, you feel this or ever felt this or heard this from other people, but it's almost like, when you talk about the mind, it's like, hey, control your mind. Like, how could I control my mind? My mind is its own thing. Like, it's a, no, but your mind is you. Your mind yeah. is literally like yeah. your <laughs> amazing thing that you bring to this world, this universe, this existence. Right. And you totally can. But because 
we are not taught from a younger age or almost at any age really how to do it. And you hear a lot of what, um, you know, you've got to be mentally tough. You've got to focus. You've got to do. And it's a lot of you have to do this, but not mm -hmm. here's how to do it. And I think that it's great that you brought up the breathing aspect. But do you feel like that's something like people almost without saying it feel like the mind is something you can't really control? I agree. And it, I think to a lot of people, it's kind of the unknown, right? It's your mind and there's sometimes good thoughts and then there's other times bad thoughts, right? Devil and you know, good and evil, you know, battling up there. And I think a lot of the times what they don't realize is they're, they're allowing those thoughts in their head. And mm -hmm. as to your point of, you know, you, you say you have to perform under pressure or it's a stressful moment, you know, get your serve over. You need to get this ace, right? Or you need to perform. That's the biggest thing I hear is my athletes are not performing under pressure. They're not focusing. And I always ask, well, how are you helping them in practice? Right? The mind values practice. It needs practice. You need repetitions. You need physical repetitions. But during those physical repetitions, how are you incorporating your mind? What are your thoughts? Are they present? Or are you thinking about last night's dinner? Or are you thinking about your parents being mad at you? Are you thinking about a breakup? You know, a million things that are going on in your life. Mm -hmm. So are you practicing with a purpose in practice? So once you get to the game, you're locked in. It's muscle memory, right? The mind mm -hmm. appreciates that. It's easier. But a lot of people, I think, you know, they, they practice or they go through the motions and they feel like they're locked in. And then after practice, if you ask athletes, how was it? You know, mentally, how was that practice? Were you locked in? I've never had an athlete say 100% all the time. Because that's just mm -hmm. the nature of it, right? But it's it's great athletes and great performers that can fill your mind getting away and bring it back, bring it back to the okay. present. Awareness. And awareness, right? Being aware, being mindful of your thoughts is, is super crucial to success with your mind. Um, I think uh, there's a couple of things that you said in there. There's everything you said in there, but uh, <laughs> that is really great. I think, though, when, when we talk about, you know, your – you'll be there sometimes, you'll be, you know, in another place, like in your mind, thinking about uh, the breakup you just had, or the thing mm -hmm. you have to do after you leave there, or maybe even it's about that sport and what's happening in those moments. Yeah. But now those moments are actually past. So you are literally still in the past in your mind, even though you're in the present thinking about that, or you're worrying about the next thing, right? Like, or afraid mm -hmm. to do that next thing. And I think, um, Mental strength to me, uh, when, when, or if I'm going to say, you know, I can control my mind, it is basically having that awareness and having some triggers that allow me to, in the moment, if I'm not aware enough, because maybe I am stressed uh, to some degree more so like in my sleep and recovery routines, they haven't been great, you know, or physically yeah. I'm so sore or I'm dead from this training or you know mentally I'm just like I'm handling uh, my personal life my business life my playing life mm -hmm. and whatever yeah. and then I've got some jerk on my team acting like a big jerk that day and and now mm -hmm. I've got to try and handle all of this and it's like your breathing I think that's the next thing and, and a really great uh, trigger for awareness and this reminds me of like I, I jump around a lot, but I usually bring it right back. So this reminds me of Maria <laughs> Dancheva with us of Team Bulgaria, who said she read an article from the article that you gave me about Michael Phelps mm -hmm. and him doing, I think what it's called, like lion's breath or something like this, yeah. and him teaching his child. And what I loved in that article was not necessarily that one thing on how to do something to help it, but the fact that it was like just, it was actually a researcher or someone who was quoted just understanding how you're breathing in a moment, that awareness to think about just that one thing. How am I breathing right now? I feel good. I feel bad. I feel sad. I feel tired. I feel energetic. I feel blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. Everything. The best way to start on this journey, in my opinion, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, is how am I breathing right now? Because yeah. then if I become aware of how I'm breathing, is it shallow? Is it deep? Is it fast? Is it slow? Is it you know, like different, uh, every other one, or um, am I holding my breath? Huge thing. I've caught mm -hmm. myself holding my breath during good times, during bad times. I'm just like, wow, that's yeah. really strange. Why was I doing that? Why don't I dive a little bit into it? And I think that it, you, if you become your own um, philosopher to yourself and your own psychologist in the term, you know, in mm -hmm. a way, 
it's a beautiful yeah. thing because that's when you find out about yourself. So what are your thoughts on those things? No, I love what you said. And I think breathing is a hidden gem that not many people focus on because I don't think it's going to do anything, right? You breathe every day. I'm breathing right now. You're breathing right now. But I ask my athletes, notice, notice how you're breathing. Is it super shallow? In volleyball, you don't have a lot of time sometimes. Like timeouts when you're serving, those are times where you have a little bit longer of a time period to really soak in your breath. But I argue serve-receive is really one of the most important, right? I set. So before a serve goes over, I'm telling everybody what's going on. There's thoughts in my head, right? I've gotten to a point when I played, I was able to simplify what I needed to get done. So I need to tell my hitters, I need to see the other offense, the defense, right? I know what's going on. Before that serve was served, I took a deep breath every single time. And so it's creating habits. Life is made out of mm -hmm. habits. Your habits either get you closer to your goals or further from your goals. And I think breathing, you know, either in bed at night, when you're serving, serve, receive. I mean, there's a million, a million times that you can incorporate it into your life. But I love what you said about Michael Phelps. Um, that's one of my favorite articles. His little two-year-old, a few years ago, but he's two-year-old practicing lion's breath. And I think starting, I cannot emphasize this so much, starting at a young age and learning the importance of your breath and learning the importance of your thoughts can help that awareness continue as you get older. Because we, mm -hmm. we all get into habits and to, you know, kind of slumps is you progress in your journey. And if you can start with a foundation at a younger age or start today, wherever you are in your journey, if you can start learning how to incorporate breath and awareness, it will help so much. And I, one of the best and most fulfilling things is when I work with athletes and, you know, we're working on sport performance and they'll come to me and say, I was really worked up about this, you know, either a test or a friend or argument, whatever I was able to incorporate breathing. And so it's mm -hmm. something, and I'm really big on this, like we're all athletes, but we're all humans too. And if you can yeah. be a good human, it will help everybody. An athlete, you know, being a good athlete. Yeah. That's, that's what you want to do. You want to achieve your goals, but I like to teach stuff that you can use on the court and off the court and it will benefit you in both. But I think, you know, I have a breathing routine that I do every night. And the thing about practicing, you know, breathing and visualizing and meditating is it doesn't, it doesn't have to be what people think it looks like, right? You're sitting down like, you know, fingers like this. No, you can be laying in bed, take five deep breaths, you know, so deep that you feel like you can't get any more air, let it out. Those heavy thoughts from practice, if you feel really, you know, bad after practice, spend some time in your locker, take one deep breath, let it out, let it go. And I think in volleyball, you know, you, you hold so much in because it's so fast and you feel like you're always thinking about the next point or you're thinking back five points, right? Mm -hmm. And you get into serve receive and your traps are really high or you just got blocked and you're like, oh man, I, I hope I don't get set again, right? Those are thoughts that go through people's heads. But if you can learn, you know what, that doesn't need to be there. I'm going to take a deep breath, wash that out and focus on what I can do now to help my team, that's when you really see success. Yeah, there's, um, okay, I'm gonna try and remember this. There's one thing that I wanna say about uh, sport and the Olympics and how that all was started and what sport means to humans, I think is massive. But before I even say that, and then get to the, the other thing that I was thinking, um, I implemented late. I think that a lot of athletes react to things that are so far out of worlds that they ha are used to so slowly sometimes when they hear it i heard it for years even through my research of trying to ask what i didn't understand were mentors but okay i just didn't know what the word was back when i was starting that asking other athletes hey how do you do this or how you know asking successful athletes and i mean success not at my level at the highest level I could find, I always sought them out. And then, you know, it's crazy. I got the same advice all the time, like this breathing, mindfulness, meditation, whatever they wanted to put a label on it to call it at that time, it's always going to be the same. We're just going to keep rebranding things because they're human yeah. things, right? Yeah. So, um, but it's funny because yeah. I just didn't do it. Like I didn't do the work. And I feel like, you know, athletes, we can't consider consider ourselves high achievers if we're not doing the basic things in our own time to just take the time and say, you know what, a daily practice of X, Y, Z is a must for me. I cannot go without doing these things, whether it's writing things down that I've got to get done in my life, like, uh, I don't know, paying my bills, you know, or um, taking care of my body, cut my nails this day, like shampoo my hair right. this day, whatever, you know what I mean? Um, 
I bring that up because I just see so many people fail to implement a tiny but massive thing for themselves, yet they will subject themselves to training and the, the hierarchy of bosses and people who can tell them what to do. Yet when it comes to telling themselves what to do, it becomes this escape. And I think that we have to, as athletes, if we want to reach that next level, we have to approach this as I'm going towards that hardest thing. What's the hardest thing for me to do if I'm honest with myself? That yeah. it only takes me. And if it's breathing or if it's just sitting down and taking that time to do that thing, you, you know you should try. Try mm -hmm. something someone tells you has worked for them enough until you realize it either works for you or it doesn't. But give it a shot and then you can shoot it down if it doesn't work. It's fine. It didn't work for you. Didn't mean it doesn't right. work for somebody else. So the other thing about the, the Olympians that I thought was, or Olympics, and the, the fact that you say this is about humans. You know, there was many years where I was contemplating, like, I just want elite because I'm tired of getting screwed over myself and other people getting screwed over. And I just want to make something that's special and that's for athletes and that protects them. And then it turned into so much more because then I realized, like, okay, mentorship is what I love doing because that's what I was always seeking out. And that's how I grew the most because from 17, 18, I was alone in this world without like a family, like a normal family structure and blah, blah, blah. And so when I was always finding these people, I wasn't realizing they were teaching me and supporting me and giving me things that without, I, I don't think I could have gotten myself here because I got myself yeah. here, but those people help. So the human factor to me is massive. I think that we've got to look at sport like the ancient Greeks did and others looked at sport and just these games that they built to train the mind and body for real life. And back then it was like war, right? <laughs> Things yeah, like yeah. that. It was, a, um, so I think that this is really important that we understand as athletes, that's one arena in our life. And for all of my athletes, like what we're trying to focus on and what I try to drive home to them. And I know that it's really hard in the beginning. It's like, I want you to succeed as a human. I don't want you to come out of sport and not be prepared for life and you controlling all the things that you can control. And so some of the things that I know I could do for you, I don't want to do them. I want you to do them. I want you to yeah. learn how to fish so you can provide for yourself when that time comes, whether you, it's you leave our agency because of whatever reason, or we choose to move a different direction, whatever it is. So yeah, I love that you said that about being human and we just need that for that. Uh, what are some of the things that you would say, like the common struggles for athletes, just when you start with them, you know, I know you're starting with younger athletes, yeah. but let's think, let's think like the college ones you, you do work with. No, I think one of the biggest things is self-talk and yeah. how to, you know, when you, when you talk to a collegiate athlete, they're, they're playing good volleyball, right? They're playing good yeah. athletics, but they've had change, right? It's either, they're going from high school or club to, to college, and that's different, a different coach, um, a different position, a different team. You know, having to earn that respect again for a lot of them is challenging because they're at the top of their, their game in club, right? They're the best player on their club team. You get to college, and I'm not saying you're not the best, but you're mm -hmm. a freshman, you're an underclassman, and you have to prove your worth again. And so it's almost like you're 13, 14 years old, um, and they feel that, you know, they feel like they have to keep climbing. And I think so much of the process is learning through it and knowing, you know what, this is the stage in my career that I'm in. How can I be my best self? Does that look mm -hmm. like I have to switch positions? Then I'm going to be my best at that position. I'm going to learn it so well. Does that look like I'm not going to play this season? Right. Then I'm going to be the best supporter and I'm gonna, still going to work hard in practice to play. Right. I'm, mm -hmm. I have to know my role. And I think that's one of the biggest things when working with athletes is one of the, the questions I ask when they talk about their team or struggling, you know, do you know your role on the team? What is your role? You know, this is your current role. What role do you want? Massive. Are you, you know, are you starting here, but you want to be the starting outside and you're kind of, you know, second, third string sometimes. What is your end goal and your end kind of role on the team that you want? But where are we now? Because if you can't be your best where you're at now, you're never going to get there. And so I think that's one of the biggest things is, understanding where you're at that starting point but also helping them create a path to get them to where they want to be and I work with athletes who some want to continue playing and some are done they've accepted that their career is almost over and so now it's working as you mentioned you know what does that transition look like when you're playing sport and you have your you know to-do list 
wrap mm -hmm. kind of on your phone or on your app, it's easy to go through life and be like, okay, great. I have lifting at, you know, six breakfast at seven class. Right. And then you get into the real world and you're like, I can do anything. I can make mm -hmm. my decisions. You know, it's not, nobody's yeah. telling me what I have to do every second. And so that is where that discipline comes in of knowing, yeah. you know what, I, I'm trying to achieve this. What does my day need to look like to get me closer to that? What do my routines need to look like to get me closer to that? Because if you can create consistent routines in your life, as small as putting your keys in the same spot, as small as putting your shoes in the same spot. You know, I vividly remember my dad growing up, he'd always put his stuff in the same spot. He'd always take everything out of the truck when we were going somewhere. And when we were little, we were like, why? You know, that's, you're, you're crazy. He always walked left when he got out of the truck, just small things that were like, that's interesting. But he built routine into his life. He depended on that and he was consistent. And I think consistency and knowing your role and, and giving it your all every single day will eventually get you to that role that you want to achieve. But one of the biggest things I think is knowing where you are and helping them kind of create a journey and a map to get to where they want to be. Oh, that's so good. It's like, it's so gold. <laughs> um, I just posted um, to Google for, for listeners, watchers now after um, elite volley combine, Marcos Soltero. Uh, he's a buddy of mine. I met him in Belgrade. He was at the CrossFit gym that I was using to work out because it's the only gym that usually has the Olympic lifting weights mm -hmm. that you can throw them down yeah. and whatever. So um, that's where I usually was working out. And then the guy who uh, also helps teach our athletes how to warm up well, how to warm down or cool down, um, how to you know move well in the sport, but also in the, the fitness hall. He and Marcos and I all were working this combine together and Marcos gave a talk on routines and how to implement that into your daily life. And I think what you said there, like I talk about a lot of different things, but since I have to cover so many things with our athletes and since I'm trying to handle so much in a way of like teaching them how to catch up to where they should be, that they have no clue that they should be there. Because if everything changed for them in 24 hours or less, how does that look to make your own schedule? How does that look to wake up? Look at all these athletes who now they have to feed themselves, clothe, them, clothe themselves, find work, mm -hmm. take care of themselves or maybe other people. And they're like, oh, my gosh, the anxiety sets in because it's like, oh, I don't know how to do any of this. And I, I don't even have a structure for myself. I've lost everything that I know. I think it's wonderful how you said it, because if you and I talk about routines all the time and I love them. And Marcos in his talk says, like, basically his routine is no matter what he has to do, these basic things of his routine, even if he's rushed any day. So if he needs mm -hmm. to boil his routine in the morning down to two minutes, he can do it because he has to hit that or every day he's not going to be setting up to have his best day. And he's trying to live his best day every day. And that's great because, yeah. okay, that's how focused and, and, and whatever he is. And I think we all can be like that. And that can, all, that can help us all get through life easier. Because if you talk about these ups and downs in life that are going to happen, because we, have, we live in an environment. So we live like internally in an external world, if that makes any sense, right? There's mm -hmm. so much happening yeah. all the time. And within ourselves, there's so much happening. And if we have these ebbs and flows and the world has its ebbs and flows and all those people, um, we have to understand that there's got to be a foundation and something to keep us sturdy, right? Yeah. What, what is our yeah. lifeline? What is our, our, our boats, you know, like in that ocean? So I love that you're, you're mentioning the routines and how important they are for in and after sport. I think that is massive mm -hmm. for athletes to understand that when you take control of this, and I say, like, as a pro, uh, if you can't do 10 minutes a day, that's like, ugh, but five minutes, <laughs> like make it yeah. five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night. There's got to be some breathing and there's got to be a little bit of writing there. Whatever it is, yeah. just don't miss it. So what would you say? I mean, I know you haven't moved into the pro world, but what would you say? And, and after this, I mean, if you have anything, I'm just thinking like the you know, they're popping into my head, these questions. Mm -hmm. Let's say we're, we're talking to an athlete and we're like, all right, if you're going to get started, because I think mental performance is when you take control of you. 
if I'm going to define yeah. it in another way, that is literally when you take the reins and say, I am going to do this. No coach can get this kill for me. No coach can make this incredible set for me at these certain times, whether it's the beginning, beginning, middle, or end of matches, right? I do this. And so if I'm going to do it, I've got to do these things. So how would you say to an athlete, we already know this is important, or we're hoping that they get that. Mm -hmm. How do you get started? What's the most simplest route to start doing this today, tomorrow, next week, next month? You know, I think going back to breath, it's, mm -hmm. it's the secret weapon, and I swear it is. And I think you know, any time that you feel overwhelmed on the court, at home, with school, with life, we all tense up, right? And we kind of get anxiety, you get stressed, whatever that word is for you. But if mm. you can learn to just breathe through it and take, there's times where, you know, days are hard. Life is not easy, right? Sport is not easy. There's challenges, there's ebbs and flows. But if you can take, you know, I even say one breath is better than no breaths. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you'd, you'd like to do, I, you know, if you're really wanting to dive deeper into this three to five deep breaths. So say you do a three second inhale, six second exhale. So double your exhale, but learning just to incorporate. And if that is two times a day in the morning and at night, start small, right? You can't start. I, I like to compare it to when people are like, I'm going to get in shape. It's the new year. They go to the gym and they work out for three hours. And then the next day they don't want to go back because it's like, well, <laughs> I tried to knock yeah. every single thing out the first day. But if you can start small and start that consistent routine of I'm going to wake up, you know, I'm going to take three deep breaths before even stepping foot out of bed. Or I'm going to, you know, wake up, take a couple of deep breaths, write three things that I'm thankful for in the morning. I like doing that at night, too. So journaling a little bit at night, you know, writing some things I'm Gratitude, thankful for. Yes. I, yeah, gratitude. It's huge. And so a lot of the things I think when you when you talk about mental performance and in volleyball, it's getting that ace to win the game. It's getting that kill down the line. Whatever that is for you starts with breathing. It starts with your awareness. It starts with focus in small things. I think where athletes kind of get confused sometimes is they think, you know, oh, it's I'm breathing in my bed. It's not going to help me serving. I'm breathing here. It's not going to help me with confrontation with my teammate. No, it, it does because it teaches you awareness and it teaches you how to calm yourself down. And there's times, you know, you're struggling in volleyball. You need to think at least one thing you're grateful for. You know, you have a bad day and you're like, oh, my gosh, you know, this is a yeah. pretty crappy day. You know, but you get mm -hmm. to the end of it and you're like, there's so much to be thankful for. And I think when you put all of your eggs in one basket and just depend on your sport, you're in a bad place because your sport yeah. is not who you are. It is what you do. And if you can learn to grasp that now when you're young, when you're whenever, if you can learn how to grasp that and know that you're so much more than that. That, that helps everything, and it, it relieves pressure from you. Like, you don't need to be living and dying with every single second, but you need to be aware of every single second and learn from it because the mm -hmm. best athletes can take that, you know, quick kind of chunk of either good information or bad information in a game, process it, and move on to the next point. If it was good, I'm doing that again, set me again. If it's bad, okay, why? My elbow was low, I was late, whatever, I was underneath the ball, my toss was too low, my serve, right? Learn from it. Take a deep breath, wash it out, leave it, leave it in that last point because you need to be present. Whether it's serve, yeah. receive, you're thinking arms out, stick your platform, right? You're visualizing that path. You're not visualizing your missed serve. You're not visualizing yeah. your coach on the sideline, right? It's being present. And I think that feeling of being present is difficult to achieve if you're not able to do it in a controlled environment, such as exactly. your bed, such as at home, you know, on the floor, such as journaling, whatever that is. But if you can learn how to do it in a more controlled environment, once the game is going, once you're in practice, it's easier to focus back in. Yeah, I've, <laughs> God, we got to talk. We've got to do some sessions. This would be incredible. <laughs> yeah. So I think there's, there's a few things. I want to give a real life example, and then maybe I'll remember the couple things that popped into my mind when you were talking. But I think um, I talk to our players a lot about, you know, if you lose focus during trainings, it's, a, it's another sign. Or if you lose control of your emotions or they go super high or super low, then it means that you really, you're out of balance. You're out of tune maybe with just even yourself, but maybe even your surroundings and a way to get back in tune is really, okay, one way is definitely to go into nature and get away from cities and all the concrete and whatever, but that's mm -hmm. a whole nother topic. Um, just being able to, I think, breathe in one way and the gratitudes, right? These are my, my two ideas on this. 
the breathing, if you can't breathe at home alone, then yeah, how are you going to be able to breathe and have your thoughts and sit there and not get attached to any one thought, just accept them as like a ton of thoughts at one time even coming in your mind and you might have some emotions for this one, some emotions for that one, some are great emotions, some are bad emotions and being able to accept them as being there, like this balloon, like, a, you know, you've got your hand on 150 balloons, right? On each on its own yeah. ribbon, on its own line. And instead of just taking one and being like, ah, uh, mesmerized by it and then caught up in it, you just, okay, you're there. I got it. I've got you in my hand. You exist. You're part of me. And that's okay. If you can't do that when you're sitting at home, if you find that hard to close your eyes, just allow yourself to breathe and not get caught up in your thoughts, that is the ultimate test. If you can't do that, then that is you've got to implement a mental practice every single day, non-negotiable. Yeah. And you're never 100%. going to get to the point where, right, you can't, sometimes it will get out of control because there's ebbs and flows in life. And you, that's why having that as a practice, even a little bit is so important. And then on the gratitude side, I think it's huge what you said, like you have these failures and after like a big loss, let's say, but same after a big win. I think you need to balance it out. What did I do yeah. right? What did I do wrong? What am I grateful for? Uh, and then let me look at that tomorrow. And now let me see if the things I did, I said I did great or I did wrong or my gratitudes, like what are they? And why did I put those things in because of how I was feeling or whatever, but mm -hmm. balance. I think bringing balance to your life is massive and you can't get caught in that whole I'm in a really good place, so I don't need to do it right now. Or I'm in a really bad place, so I can't do it right now. You have yeah. to just do it. It's like, it's like mm -hmm. a snowstorm, right? You can't just go out every few days in a snowstorm to try to clear out your driveway so that somebody can come home, right? Or you can get out of mm -hmm. your home. You've got to clear a lot of, little off every day or it's going to be massive. So one right. of the real life examples that I wanted to give that I do, I talk about training and, and volleyball specifically. Um, I learned this after national team the first time in 2005, 2006, and then I, I brought it into my my practice. I remember I was playing in Finland in 2008. Imagine the time span for me to just something to click and finally go, okay, I'm going to incorporate breathing as my, like, okay, the trigger is emotion. High emotion, mm -hmm. low emotion. So low emotion equates with bad, uh, I feel bad about this mistake or I feel bad about myself or whatever. High emotion is like, I'm just crazy to kill somebody and chop off their head yeah. and whatever, right? Okay, so I, after each point, I allowed myself to feel and think whatever I was thinking. But the moment the whistle blew, I would take a deep breath in, a breath out that was a little bit longer, but maybe sharp because I'm in training yeah. and I don't, I'm not trying to relax completely, but I want to, I want to keep sharp. And then at the same time as I was doing the breath out, I would do this with my hands, like just, but down. And it's funny because if you watch my videos from Finland or after 2008, you will see me do that. You do that. After, <laughs> yeah, like uh, I'll do it uh, right when I'm getting ready to hit. Or I would do, mm -hmm. I can't do it after a reception if I'm playing as a receiver. So I would receive, <sighs> breath out, move to where I need to go. I get to where yeah. I go. It's another pause, a split pause. I... It was all, you wouldn't even know it unless you were standing right here by me. But mm -hmm. every time I finished an action, I had a breath out to remind myself, mm -hmm. breathe. Even if I'm not going to breathe during my jump, which you shouldn't breathe, you should hold that in so you get all yeah. that power. But yeah. my point is, is like I was breaking up these sections of trainings and matches and actions so that I wasn't just getting caught up in this landslide of things and or mm -hmm. emotions. I was allowing myself like assessment periods, but a ton of them in one training mm -hmm. or a ton of them in one match. So that uh, was a huge deal. But anyways, uh, we yeah. went much longer than we thought. I wanted to leave it <laughs> open good. to you to talk after you answer this question that Macy Gilson, who just joined, asked. So I think it's perfect timing. But she said, um, let's see. Can you give, yeah, here, can you read that? Yeah, can you give me some tips on how to, get my mind ready for practice? And that's a really good question. So I think, you know, people and athletes come into practice, whatever time of day, you've had stuff before, you've had stuff prior, whether it's school, whether it's workout, whether it's class, you know, work, whatever that is, you're coming into the gym with baggage, or even if you just woke up in the morning, right? How'd you sleep? 
How was the night before? You're coming in with a certain feeling, a certain emotion. And I think my biggest thing is when you're in the gym, you have to physically and mentally be in the gym. A lot of athletes get to the gym. You're physically there. Are you mentally checked in? So I think one of the biggest things for me is having a routine prior to practice that includes breath. So I would, you know, put my shoes on when I was playing, lace them up, you know, go get my ankle team, do, do all that stuff. But every single time before I walked into the gym, I set goals for myself that practice. Yeah. It was three goals. So it was, you know, work on your finish, you know, covering and staying uh, disciplined and right back. Right. So I have those three goals and then I'd always have a purpose going into practice because I knew that I had my goals. Right. I'd remember them, but then I'd choose a word and my word for my entire life since I was little was believe. So believe you can do it, you know, believe you can be an all-star in this practice, believe that you can get that starting spot. If you work hard enough, you will achieve that, but you have to believe in yourself first. And so I think, long story short, prior to practice, create a routine, a simple routine that includes breath. A lot of the athletes I work with, you know, they're going to either collegiate or club practice. And I say, in the car ride there with your parents, take a few deep breaths, close your eyes. When you get to the gym, put your shoes on. Before stepping onto that court, have a purpose. You know, practicing is great and you need it. You need to practice with a purpose, though. You can't just go through the motions and, you know, you make it through practice, right? You're a good athlete, especially at the professional level. You're all great athletes. Mm -hmm. But who is going to go into practice with a purpose? Who is going into practice? Sport is fun, right? I, I love playing ball. I absolutely love it. I love going into the gym now and getting that energy and, you know, setting a hitter and that, like, you can't replicate that feeling, but you have to go into practice knowing that it's business too, right? Right. You can have fun, you can joke around, but like you said, once that service serve, you have to lock in, right? You have to be focused in on what you can control that single point. You can't think about anything else. And so breathing helped me a lot kind of lock in. So breathing, setting your goals before practice. And I always had a word that I'd tell myself, you know, I'd write it like on my wrist sometimes with a Sharpie or I'd tape my wrist just one time around, write believe on there. And so there's times where, you know, you're frustrated or you're either you yourself are struggling, your team is kind of, you know, down a couple points and you you need that word or that teammate to pick you up. And if you can tell yourself that and kind of self-regulate and say, okay, <sighs> deep breath, believe, we can do it. We're down five. Who cares? We're, we're down one point at a time. We have to find one point at a time to get and make up five points. And so bringing yourself to the present moment. But I think starting, starting with some breath work prior to practice, starting with a purpose and going into practice with some goals. And some of, sometimes it's as small as being present, you know, focusing on being present this practice, you know, focusing on my self-talk and my body language, right? Controlling what you can control first and not worrying about other people and really working on you. And practice is a perfect time to do that. Yeah. I think there's, uh, let me, let me throw out the, the examples because I think everything you said was incredible. And I think the examples will support that exact thing because a lot of this advice I'm giving to the players too. And it's like one at a time. And that's why I wanted to do this so bad with you because I want something to just really give them and say, Hey, let's get started. Here's a plan, you know, from getting started to really getting going. Um, First things first is that I implement breathing by the one example that I gave. So I use the, the finish of actions to take the deep breath, let it out. And when I let it out, the mind is saying that key word of the next thing yeah. that I want to do. So like I used to tell Melina Terrell this all the time, who's like, shout out. She's a like top scorer in France right now. Came from um, University of San Francisco, was like a player that's utility nobody knew of and now they're starting to figure out who she is. But what's great is that we talked about having a key word during certain times to say, like, this is my target for this training. So for mm-hmm. attack or serve, it would be maybe one day high and hard. And maybe the next day it'd be like high and uh, uh, feel or it just it could just be one word like feel. And that meant to feel the ball, feel the ball on yeah. reception, feel the ball in your hands when you're setting And I think you talk about being present. And I think that one of the things that also ties the breathing, the the way to get there, to get to how present am I, I, and what is my, what's my rhythm? Like, what's my, uh, you know, like you have to find your own rhythm in trainings and whatever. And you can't allow an external 
uh, life or event or whatever changed that. And so one of the ways to do that is I would enter um, timeouts and it would just be, the rule was I had to breathe through my nose. So imagine if it was like a 45 second rally and then coming into a timeout and you're, yeah. you just want to heave and, and yeah. whatever. And you, so it's like, I slow things down to my breathing tempo by saying like, I was doing something around a three second in five to six second out, but through the nose completely. And what was yeah. nice is in the beginning, beginning of that, I'm almost not really hearing anything. There's just so much, but by the end of that time out, that 20, 30 seconds, I hear exactly all the words that my coach is saying. I feel the sweat on my body. I feel the energy or the lag thereof in the gym. Yeah. I can feel how I feel. I can feel my heartbeat. I can feel if I'm tired or energetic. I have tapped into my presence, my rhythm, right? And so mm -hmm. I think that these are some of the things. And like you said, I love that you gave three things that you do for training because I talked to a player and it's like, don't just have one goal for training. There are, what, six different skills in volleyball. And if uh, yeah. three of them are main skills for you and your, your position, then have those three goals. I know when I'm setting, this is the one thing I want to work on. Not five mm -hmm. things, not two, one right. for that right. training, right? And for each skill that you really want to work on, write down those goals. I love the fact that you gave the whole, like, this is my, what did you call it? The, I would say focus. What did you say? For uh, the training? A purpose. Purpose, right. exactly. So it's and my, yeah, I going love and having that. a purpose. Yeah, this is huge. And we do a life, um, or we do a vision and goals when the, the ladies are coming into the agency. And I think that that's so important to have that vision for actually day-to-day -day mm -hmm. stuff too right? What is my, what yeah. do I want to accomplish by this whole training? So anyways, thank you so much for all of this. I would say to the person who asked, yeah. could you share some advice on getting ready for a big tournament such as Denver being away at a venue and an altitude, all the tips that she talked about in here, definitely listen to them and that I gave, but I would say I would add into that, visualize yourself, take like Google the place that you're going to train in, mm -hmm. find videos of that place, watch the video, close your eyes, try to see that place and then try to feel like what it would feel like to have a ball that floats a little longer, you know, or if you hit right. a, a it, it will go further in altitude. And I know because at Team USA, we would have to do yeah. all the training at Colorado Springs and it was nuts. It's <laughs> just like, how was that served that far out? Yeah. yeah. And so I think visualize that it. Point, yeah, yeah. Visualizing. And I think also being aware of your breath. All right, it's easy to yes. super shallow. And you know, you feel stressed, it's different, you know, you're missed five serves, whatever that is for you. You know, you feel kind of out of your element, but being able to, okay, everybody was playing in this arena. And I think some of the things that kind of trigger me the most is when athletes make excuses for, you know, temperature in the gym or lighting or, you know, altitude, whatever that is, it's acceptance of that. Everybody is yes. playing in the same area. How can yep. I control me? Right? Can I control my breath? Yeah. Can I control my effort? Yeah. Can I realize how hard I'm serving the ball? Yes. And that's that's huge at crossroads. Um, is realizing, you know, okay, it's I need to serve about sixty percent, right? And I need to to not take my, you know, Texas, if you're in Texas, Texas serve to to Colorado and do the same and expect the same results because it's different. Yeah. So I think awareness, you know, just focusing on your breath and at the same time realizing what you need to change in your game to play you know, to that venue. Yeah. And when you visualize one of my last tips for all of this is don't just visualize yourself playing in a match, visualize walking into that v that venue, mm -hmm. visualize putting on your shoes, doing your rituals, doing your breathing, doing your visualizations for 30 yeah. seconds, even before you even start your warm up. visualize yourself warming up. How does it feel to warm up? Visualize yourself in your warm up attacking deep and where you want to attack, yeah. serving where you want to serve, knowing that you have to take some off and find your rhythm in your warm up before you even get into the match. And I think this is huge because I see so many athletes, especially the young ones, but not only them, pros too. And it's like they're just going to pound away at the ball or, or do something so just like uh, without a purpose and without a goal. And I think everything you do should incorporate that, including your visualizations about that thing. So thank you so much, Alexia. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So thank much you more for to having come. me. This has been so fun. Yeah. yeah.
Super I'm excited. Exciting. So what, how can people find you? And um, also just to say, please go to the link in our bios, fill out the form. She'll talk a little bit about what that is and what that means and what she's offering people. Go ahead. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Um, so we're going to put a link in both of our bios. It'll be kind of a questionnaire if you're interested in learning more um, about what I do on the mental performance and mindfulness side. If you're interested in, you know, maybe getting a lesson or in a package, feel free to fill that out. Um, I'll get back to you and we can kind of take it from there. We are offering a special for elite, specifically elite volley athletes, but also a special for athletes who are listening in um, and who are not part of elite volley. And so go ahead and fill that out and I'll get back to you and, and we can get started. And it's, it's super exciting, but I just, I'm appreciative of this opportunity. I think that, like I mentioned at the beginning, this was a long time coming and I'm just yeah. thankful that you reached out and, you know, we can, we're all on, you know, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and have our websites. And so if y'all want to find us there, that's cool. But just a, a really fun opportunity to talk to somebody who understands the mind and who understands how important that part of the game is, because I don't, I'm not sure you know, people are slowly, like you said, slowly trying to accept that it does matter. But I, you know, as we say here, mind matters most, you know, yes, mm -hmm. your physical training and all that counts. But if you can't get to your physical training on time, if you can't get out of bed, if you can't push yourself to the next level, if you can't do extra, then you know, you're physically not going to get to where you want to be. And so I think, you know, it's, it's been super fun talking to you. I think we have a lot of the same thoughts and I've, I've had a blast. Me too. And I want to leave everybody on this um, thought. If you ever think that you can not achieve something or that people doing something at such a high level are so special and so different, just remember they are humans. They have a body, mm -hmm. they have their breathing, they have their mind, they have the same balls, the same court, the same volleyball is being played. And for every 10 athletes that you can find that are just so extraordinary physically and they, they get it done in these hard moments, you can find the same that are not so extraordinary physically, like jumping so high or hitting so hard that are more technical, who have made it to the same place and the same thing they will have in common that allows them to get those gold medals, those medals, those appearances and finals and whatever's, that success repeatedly is the fact that they have learned that the mind does matter most. I do love how that ended, by the way, Alexia. So yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. <laughs> I'm also so grateful yeah. for you. By the way, that's a trademark for her. Mind matters most yeah, and I love it. Mind matters most. Yeah, thank Alrighty. you. <laughs> Take care. Cool. Yeah, talk to you Bye. later. See ya. Bye.